Hello and welcome to Meeple Mentor Reviews. I'm Jared and with me is Holly. And we are taking a look today at Expeditions, a sequel to Scythe from Stonemaier Games, uh, designed by Jamie Stegmeier. So this uh, looks a lot like Scythe, but if you're a Scythe fan, how similar is it to Scythe? Is it worth playing? Is it a different game? Is it the same game, but simpler? Let's break it down. Um, it plays one to five players, ages 14 and up. Um, plays in an hour, hour and a half, which is, you know, about what we experienced. We've played it probably five or six times. Oh gosh. Maybe yeah, more. It's been a good time. <laughs> um, we've played it at two player a lot, and we've played it at three player uh, a few more times after that. Um, yeah, so if you like the Scythe artwork, first of all, it's the same. Like, it, it looks like Scythe. Um, it's always nice to have that you know really nice artwork um this is by jacob rosalski um i think he was the same person who did the art on the uh on side now this is a different experience than scythe it is not scythe light um we were introducing this to our friend and she's like isn't that just like you know simpler scythe and it's like no, there's a lot that's unique to this. That there, I mean, there are some baseline, very baseline similarities. But mm -hmm. other than that... Because the game itself is a fusion of a lot of different game mechanisms, and some of which are also found inside. Um, and component-wise, you'll find, you know, like wooden pieces, an action pawn, um, you know, uh, mechs. But in this game, you only have one mech, and that's essentially your piece that's just traveling the board. Um, this has uh, a randomly set up map using hex tiles that are mm -hmm. fairly large. Um, this game, there's no combat, so you're just exploring out. Um, only the first part of the tiles are shown at the start of the game. There is kind of combat. Well, you want to elaborate on that? Well, you have the option to vanquish. Uh, so. You start out with, is it four tiles or five that are already flipped? I think it's five. And then, so as you want to progress in rows, you flip these tiles and there are compasses on the tiles that you collect when you flip them. But when you broach these new tiles, you have to reach into a bag and pull out what's called corruption. And there's a, a number that says five plus or four plus or whatever and you have to draw out tiles until you at least reach that number and the only way you can get the benefit underneath is to vanquish the tiles it's true um so you know it's a very abstracted kind of uh combat thematically i guess you would say that is like combat or vanquishing you know the corruption and removing that from that uh from that tile um, but there's no player on player right. there's no, attack or anything. There's hardly any like player interaction as far as that goes. Yeah, it's very Euro-y in that sense. Yeah. You know, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. You are restricted by where other players are because there's only one mech allowed per tile. So if someone's on the tile that you want to be on because it has an ability that you want to gather it, um, you're going to have to wait till they move. Pretty much. I mean, there's really not much you can do. Um, now, you have your own little board. Uh, everyone has the same general board, but with one difference of having a unique ability. And it's a small ability, but it's something that gives you something or some other different way to, th you know, to use your resources generally. Yeah, like one is you can move one further distance than anyone else. Another, you know, you can... Um, you can use the map the compasses you can use them for any resource mm -hmm. um and then there was one where you can reduce the cost of what you have to vanquish on those tiles um on the first tile of each color that yes. you do that can be really useful to help kind of focus your efforts on more of the vanquishing um also like scythe the game ends when someone has accomplished four of the i want to say seven or eight possible objectives that you can uh, achieve um, you can, for instance, collect seven workers, which qualifies you for a star, um, or uh, what was the other? Five compasses. Five uh, maps. Sorry, they're maps. Five compass maps tokens. <laughs> um, now, those share the same like claimed uh, bonus. So mm -hmm. if you claimed one, you can't claim the other. It's all like that one's the same. 
Um, but once someone's put four of their stars out, that triggers the final round. Everyone gets one final turn from that point, and then you start counting up uh, money earned, which is points. Um, money is earned for the stars you put out, and the value of those stars are how many quests that you've completed. Um, by default, everyone can complete four quests, four item upgrades, and four meteorite melds. Um, which essentially means tucking these cards under your board. Mm -hmm. um, the way that those all work is a little bit different, um, each one, but a quest essentially tells you where your mech needs to be um, and what you need to pay to be able to complete it. Um, but completing a quest, melding a meteorite, those aren't standard actions. Um, you have to have a card or another ability that tells you you're allowed to solve that quest or allowed to meld that meteorite. Not only do you have to have the card, you have to have the worker yes. for the ability. Yes. <laughs> so this is a game with a lot of multi-use cards and engine building as well. Um, the Among the three different types of cards of the items, the quests, and the meteorites, they can be um, used for their core value which gives you one of those two um resources that are being used for vanquishing and, and paying for things like uh power and guile mm -hmm. um when played you can also add one collected worker that you may have to the card to activate the ability on the bottom part if the you know worker matches the color so you're generally wanting to collect you know one or two of different colors so that you can kind of activate as many cards as you're playing and um yeah by activating those abilities that's where you can do those solving or the melding or the upgrading and things like that um, some of the tiles have special gather abilities that you can do um, that may also let you do that but those are usually covered up initially when they're flipped over by the uh, corruption tiles that holly mentioned so as you uncover a new tile uh, like corruption tiles get added to it. You mentioned earlier about qualifying for the, mm -hmm. but you didn't mention That's right. <laughs> what you mean by qualifying. So you have to be able to take the gather action on a tile that has the star icon on it, which simply means letting you place a star on the base camp board if you've qualified for one. Mm -hmm. um, so the three main actions that you can really do are move, play a card, and gather. Among those, you can usually only do two of them on a turn. Um, you'd have to actually take a refresh turn to reset your action cube, um, you know, to collect all your cards back to being able to be played again and your workers to be used again, and that'll be your turn. But your next immediate turn, you can do all three of those, move, gather, and play card in any combination you want, or in any order, rather. Um, but then your uh, action cube actually covers up one of those three actions from then on, you know, until you refresh. And so that's, you, you're moving this cube to cover up one action, essentially, every turn, usually just taking two of the actions. Mm -hmm. So you can't do the same one two times in a row. Right. It does take some planning. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really cool. I really liked it. I really liked it too. Um, I, I really enjoy playing this. I, I like the card play. I like the dynamics of, you know, moving around and getting to the best positions for using cards that I have in front of me. Um, and you don't actually hold any cards in the game. Like your hand is always the face up cards, like on the left of the board and then the active cards that you've played or just collected go on the right side of the board. Um, and I think it's a very, you know, simple way to kind of streamline some really fun card engine building type of mechanisms. And the fact that the arrangement of all the tiles are always going to be, you know, a little bit random mm -hmm. every time you play. And um, they've grouped the tiles into three, like, main sections. So, like, um, Southern, Central, and North. Um, but at the same time, you don't know where they're all going to be. Um, a big part of this is with positioning, some of these actions let you take adjacent cards as you pick them up. Um, there are gaps that are intentionally left on the map. That is where, you know, new playing cards can be placed and gathered from. And depending on the type of, you know, 
ability that tells you to pick up a card. It can either be any of those five face-up cards or an adjacent one to where your mech is. So there's a lot of cool things to do and think about and try to strategize when you're playing this. Mm -hmm. um, we liked it, like I said, enough that we were playing it nonstop, like our go-to <laughs> game for a few weeks. Um, I, we really enjoyed playing this. I liked it I quite a bit. I didn't even bother packing it away for a while. I was like, nah, we're going to play that again. We're just going to keep leaving yeah. it out. I don't want to have to unpack. And <laughs> yeah, it's it's been um, it's been fun to play, and I really enjoyed it. I, I think if you like card play, if you like um, strategy games and a little bit of exploration and, and trying to come up with um, ways to better time you know when to move and when to gather and when to play like those sorts of things you're going to really enjoy how this plays and if you're lucky you'll get a wolf companion yeah <laughs> <laughs> you do start with like a human companion car or human card and their animal companion card as well mm -hmm. so um yeah whoever you end up with they have their own kind of special ability and always unique artwork um, and you can mix and match the mechs with different colors because they're um, the bases, the plastic pieces that go underneath to mark that they're yours can be assigned to your color. They're not, you know, it's not like this mech is always black or this one's right. always green or something like that. So, um, yeah, definitely check out Expeditions. It's not quite like Scythe, but it uses some good ideas from Scythe to make a new game that plays in less time than Scythe mm -hmm. and um, a different experience. Yeah. You know, certainly Definitely. different. I enjoyed it a lot. The artwork is great. The gameplay is fun. It's thinky without being too thinky. Yeah. Yeah. You know? uh, that's a good point. You know, you, you do spend a lot of time to like figure out the best way to do it, but there's only so much you can plan you know, plan for, or you just kind of have to do the best with what you got. Yeah. Um, um it's, it, you have to see where the person in front of you is going to land. Yeah. It's much more of a um, tactical game than strategy. Yes. You know, so you do have to respond more to, you know, what's happening around you and, uh, what tiles are revealed and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and what cards are available which is crazy because i'm normally not one of those like think on the go game people but i liked it yeah <laughs> you really did and i think that's great that you know both of us enjoyed this coming from different you know play styles that you know we tend to like more um so it really speaks to the quality of i think a well-designed game i agree so Definitely check out Expeditions. Even if you don't like Scythe, I think you yep. could really like this game. Mm -hmm. Because it's like it's, it's just different. I mean, it's it's two different games. It, it really is. is. Yeah. So check it out. Um, and thanks for watching our review today of Expeditions. I've been Jared. I'm Holly. We'll see you next time. <laughs>